welcome everyone uh, thanks for coming in uh, this early and you know during the season um, it's a great pleasure to uh, welcome aviad rubinstein uh, aviad is a phd student at uh, uc berkeley and a uh, microsoft research fellowship uh, winner and he's also won multiple best paper awards in uh, stock fox uh, soda itcs okay i i, I can't keep track <laughs> uh, so avya uh, is going to tell us about harness of approximation between p and np so thanks nikhil um so let me uh, uh be, okay be, before i start with a uh, concrete example just uh uh, some, some of you, I, I know some of you are unfamiliar faces. Please ask me any questions. And if, I'm, I'm if Nikhil, if I'm going too slow, then uh, uh, press the fast forward. OK. Uh, OK, first example. Um, uh, how I got interested in all this stuff is uh, bidding for classes. So uh, you want to you uh, allocate seats in classes to students and their um, uh, limited uh, seats in the, in the class and, and so on. And there, there are different ways of uh, different systems that people do this in practice. One thing is um, many universities do it by, by uh, uh, sequential dictatorship or seniority. So you have some ordering of the students either by seniority or randomized or something like that. And you let the first person pick whatever schedule they want and the second person, etc. cetera. Um, and this is uh, unfair, and it's also uh, inefficient. So if I don't really care about which class I'm taking, but you really want the last seat in some class, there is, if I'm before you, there is no, no way of uh, telling. And another system that's uh, uh, pretty popular is uh, uh, bidding auctions. On, uh, so every student gets uh, 100 points, and they're, they're bidding for their classes. And this also has uh, many problems. So one thing is the issue of uh, real versus fake money. So if, you're, uh, uh, if I saw a really nice uh, Ferrari outside, I don't really need a car in Seattle, but maybe I would, I would bid $10 to, to drive it. And you know, I, I, I don't get it, but I'd keep my $10. Uh, if you bid for your classes and you didn't get the classes that you want, then you get the fake points back. But that doesn't do you any good. Um, yeah, yeah, but 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 so you bid for, you bid for the class and 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 you didn't get the class that you won because someone bid more than you did, but and you, you don't you don't get any classes, right? It's it's different than uh, the standard uh, like quasi-linear utility. Yeah, and also uh, when you're talking about class schedules, you have a lot of uh, complementaries and supplementaries. Like you don't want to take two classes at the same time, which is hard to express with. Uh, like a first price auction. Um, there is the, the Harvard Business School uh, system, which is um, M rounds of, uh, altern of uh, alternating sequential dictatorship. So we, you pick some order over the students, and le you let them pick one class, and then you go in the reverse with the second class, and et cetera. And it's, it's probably better than the first se sequential dictatorship, has been uh, uh, shown to be uh, very non-truthful and um, inefficient, etc. And there, there are uh, many others. And the one I want to tell you about is uh, called uh, course match, or for economists, it's approximate competitive equilibrium for equal incomes. I'll say that again in a second. It's uh, approximately efficient and fair and uh, um, truthful. Okay, so so what is a competitive equilibrium from equal incomes? So for each class, we're going to have some price uh, PJ. And we're going to give uh, equal incomes means that every student gets uh, the same budget of uh, BI equals 1. And the competitive equilibrium part means that, uh, so the, the, there is no bidding. The, the, system get, the, student, the student tells the system everything the, uh, she wants, about like all her preference over schedules. And the system will give the student the uh, best schedule she can afford within, uh, with giving the prices. And there is a market clearing requirement that we want every class to uh, be exactly full. And if ma maybe there's a class that no one wants, so you can have price zero and, and be under subscribed. That's OK. So that's uh, really nice. The problem is that 
such, such prices don't exist. Um, so we have indivisible goods and uh, you have uh, complementaries. And so you, you cannot find this. Uh, I mean, the equilibrium doesn't exist. OK, so we can talk about a proximate uh, CEI. Uh, so it's going to be approximate in two. There are two parameters for the approximation. One is this alpha, which is uh, uh, so clearing error. So it's not going to exactly clear, clear the market. Every class is maybe a little bit oversubscribed, but a little bit undersubscribed. And the beta is also uh, um, uh, for tie breaking. If everyone wants the same, they, you have to somehow break ties. And this is known to always exist. And like I said, it's, uh, you can uh, prove the game theoretic uh, properties that it's uh, approximately truthful and approximately efficient. And uh, the computational problem is the, this ACI exists, but c can you find one? And um, Okay, so, so there is a heuristic algorithm that um, actually been uh, implemented in practice and it's actually used to assign uh, uh, allocate classes at uh, Wharton and UPenn and uh, maybe also in uh, uh, U of Washington next year, I don't know. Uh, and does pretty well in practice. I mean, it runs, when we started working on it, it ran a couple of days. I think now it converges in a couple hours, but it's, it's something you run once in a semester, so that's reasonable. Um, but of course, you want to, it would be much better if we had a, a proper algorithm with uh, provable guarantees. So you can reason about how to make it better, and you can, uh, you can know if it would work also in a different university. OK, so because this, uh, what, what I mean by win P and P, because this uh, equilibrium, approximate equilibrium, always exists, it's not going to be NP hard. Because NP hard, we're deciding uh, it's a, the decision question is hard, like deciding whether there exists a solution or not. But here there always exists a solution. Uh, so we have this uh, framework called uh, PPAD to sh prove harness for such uh, problems. So very roughly, you, I have this uh, exponential size graph. And I, I give you one uh, vertex with an odd degree. And you need to find another vertex with an odd degree. So there has to be exist another vertex with an odd degree because the sum of the uh, degrees is even, and you have to find it. And in uh, recent work, we showed the, uh, with Othman and Papa Dimitri, we showed that finding this uh, approximate CEI is actually uh, PPD complete. So kind of. Uh, uh, okay, so, so for the same alpha that uh, there is the existing proof, and, there, and then there is, a, there, there is a question of what kind of beta, how, how much, how, so the, the same clearing market as in the existing proof, and there's a question of how much uh, income inequality you allow. So uh, first of all, if you have arbitrary income inequality, then you can actually do sequential dictatorship. You can give the first, you know, like infinite um, budget and the second one, right? And then if you have really, the, the existence proof needs uh, just tie breaking. And then there is a, so there's a range in uh, this paper we had uh, um, uh, one over poly, beta was one over poly, and then the next paper was uh, a constant and I'll, I'll, even, even, even stronger. But, um, okay. And then there are other, so there is this class PPD that's, um, uh, approximate CEI is um, is complete for the other other problems like uh, finding a market equilibrium or a, a, an, an, an approximate even approximate market equilibrium or even approximate uh, uh, Nash equilibrium and n player game and of course many many other works um, in this class. Um, Okay, and another example is a uh, densest k subgraph. So you all, you all know the uh, uh, k click problem. I give you a graph G and I ask, does uh, G contain a click of size k? 
And that's uh, the, the known to be NP-hard, one of the most uh, basic and studied uh, problems in uh, computer science. And then you can ask about, so it's NP-hard, let's do approximation. So maybe I, uh, I'm okay with, even if the graph has click of size k, I'm okay with the click much smaller. So this is almost uh, over, over a linear, k over a linear, smaller. And this has been the sort of understanding the hardness of this problem has been the driving force in uh, understanding hardness of approximation in general. And after a long line, line of works, we know that this is still NP-hard, even with... Um, but for a lot of uh, applications, maybe it's more natural to relax the clique part. So I still require you to find k vertices. But now instead of a click, I just want something with very high, den with very high density. So say density 99% or 1%. And here there are uh, algorithms that run in quasi-polynomial time. So there are a couple more. Uh, time, uh, the running time is n to the log n, with some dependence on uh, delta. So it's probably not going to be NP-hard, because uh, for all we know, uh, 3SAT requires, uh, in the worst case, requires uh, exponential time. What happens if we relax both? So I, I, uh, I allow you to pick a, sub, a subgraph that's much smaller, much smaller than k. And I, I, instead of click, I want something that's only like a high density. Uh, so, so the, yeah, I mean, so one way you can ask is, can you find a graph that has density, a subgraph that has density, oh, or can you distinguish? Yeah, so this is uh, for the decision version. Okay, and, and then we, we have a theorem that uh, we can show that we actually need, even for this weaker version, you actually need uh, quasi-polynomial time, so approximately into the log n. And by, by the, the algorithms that we saw in the last slide, this is tight. So um, this, this is one. We have a whole class of, uh, uh, of problems where the uh, correct running time is quasi-polynomial. That's the best we can do in that. What is a community detection paper? Um, so, thanks. So, so there is, there, okay, community detection, there, there are a billion of uh, uh, definitions for what is a community and uh, uh, what's the model and so on. But uh, one of the uh, non generative model uh, most studied uh, uh, definitions is um, a community is, um, it's called alpha beta community. And that means that every member of the community is friends with an alpha fraction of the community, and every non-member is friends with at most a beta fraction. And then for any constant alpha larger than beta, you can do this in quasi-polynomial time, and you actually need quasi-polynomial time. Uh, okay, La last example, uh, uh, two-player Nash equilibrium. So, um, I, I, you know, this is the sort of the problem about uh, uh, games. There's Alice and Bob and whatnot, but this is um, the canonical problem in, in equilibrium uh, study in general, which are uh, um, useful in many, many other disciplines, uh, not just uh, those, uh, Alice and Bob playing game. And we know that uh, once the players are in equilibrium, they, they have no incentive to deviate. This is a definition of equilibrium. But the, the million dollar question is, how do they reach equilibrium in the first place? And this question has been studied by economists for over 100 years and um, still not a good, we don't have a good answer. So there is the uh, computer scientist's take on this question is, is there an algorithm that can find an equilibrium? 
And the, the idea is if, there, if, there is, if an algorithm that's centralized and, and run by, by, by an, an, uh, high, you know, with all, all the today's technology cannot find equilibrium, why would a system that's uh, distributed and every person, every agent has their own utility and so on, somehow converge to an equilibrium? Uh, this code was originally by Kamal Jain. Yeah, I, I, I thought so, but I couldn't find anywhere where, uh, where he says that. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to. Okay, I'll, I'll add it to you. Um, and within this uh, whole uh, field of equilibrium study, the, the, the main uh, open question was, is there a, a polynomial time approximation scheme for uh, two-player Nash? So for, uh, for, uh, can you find an epsilon Nash for every epsilon uh, polynomial time? And in the next few slides, I'll, I'll show you actually a lot of algorithms that don't quite get... Uh, don't quite achieve that, but uh, they, 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 I, the reason I'm showing you to you, them to you is first it shows you this is a really a, um, this was a really a very uh, uh, important problem. It gave a lot of people in the community thought the actually that full algorithm is just around, around the corner, and uh, uh, if you like to show a harness result like me, then maybe this is like obstacles. So you, the harness result has to uh, overcome all of those. Uh, Algorithms. So first is uh, uh, the Lemke Hausen algorithm. Uh, it, it actually takes exponential time, and it finds an exact Nash equilibrium in two-player game. And the reason it's interesting is it places the problem in PPAD. So it's not going. It's not going to be uh, uh, again. It's not going to be NP, NP hard. It's um, not harder than finding this uh, uh, other odd degree vertex. And it's actually known to be uh, PPD complete. And even if you want, uh, even if you allow like a one over poly approximation, that's still PPD hard. And so the, the main open question was what about uh, epsilon approximation for uh, constant epsilon? A second algorithm is uh, by Lipson, Marakakis, and Meta. And it finds an epsilon uh, approximate equ equilibrium for a constant epsilon, and it runs in quasi-polynomial time. So again, we have this n to the log n uh, running time. And that means it's probably not going to be PPD hard like the uh, 1 over n Nash or exact Nash. And we have this like uh, uh, exponential time hypothesis for PPD. It's if I'm, I'm giving you this exponential size graph, uh, we, like, we hypothesize that it actually takes you exponential time to find the uh, NFL line. We, we don't know any non-trivial algorithms to do it. Can you remind me what's the relation between PPAD and PLS? Uh, yeah, so, so there is uh, this excellent, excellent question. So what, what's the relation between PPAD and PLS? I'll touch on the very last slide, but they're orthogonal. So, so PLS is another, another class of uh, problems that uh, are known to have a solution, so they're not NP-hard, but the reason they have a solution is different. Uh, and they're con conjectured to be uh, uh, actually uh, different, um, and there's oracle separations and so on, and there's a, a class in the intersections called CLS, and And then, uh, you know, the question is, do we actually need quasi-polynomial time? Uh, and there is, so there, there is also a, a approximation algorithms that run in polynomial time, but they don't, they don't quite get arbitrarily good. The, the state of the art is uh, uh, 0 0.33 approximation, so uh, you can still gain a lot from deviating. It's not too good. And finally, let me, let me mention there are a lot of uh, um, special cases that uh, really come close to, uh, um, seem like they really come close to a, an actual p-test. But in general, um, it, we, we can show we ac you actually need uh, uh, quasi-polynomial time, assuming this uh, ETH for uh, PPD. 
So now this is uh, in the intersection of the. Uh, Okay, questions on this? So for what value of epsilon is this? Uh, some uh, constant uh, epsilon. <laughs> okay. Some small constant. Um, okay, let, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about the, the proof. I'll tell you about the proof of uh, uh, the two-player Nash, but it's sort of, um, you, it borrows te on techniques from uh, both sides. And, So and the the main um, the main challenge in this uh, in in proving this result is that we don't have all the other hardness approximation results in the in the quasi poly uh, um, world use the PCP theorem and most of our uh, uh, hardness approximation result in general everything uses the PCP theorem and we don't have a, a, a good analog for um, PPAD. So the, the the first question you can ask is what does it even mean to what what, what does it even mean to have a PCP theorem for a PPAD, and then uh, uh, w w w w is it is it good for anything and and you actually need to prove it right. So let me start with this telling you what is a, a PCP for a PPAD. So uh, you all know uh, three coloring right. I have to color every vertex so that. Every, in, I have three colors, so I have to color every vertex either uh, purple, red, or gr gray. And uh, I have a, cons a constraint on every two uh, vertices that the color is different. And we know for uh, almost half a century that this is uh, NP complete. Okay, and then the P what the PCP theorem tells us is that even if even if the there is a coloring that satisfies all the constraints, so every ed edge can be bichromatic, finding an assignment where almost all the edges are uh, bichromatic is still NP hard. Okay. Um, so if we talk about uh, Let's, let's try to also represent uh, Nash, uh, n-player Nash as a constraint satisfaction problem. So we can have, uh, again, players, and uh, uh, we'll have, instead of the constraints, we'll have biomatrix games to win, uh, so two-player games, we win uh, pairs of vertices. And uh, instead of talking about the, the general, uh, uh, so the, the general n-player game is, doesn't even have a polynomial size description. But I, I'll res let's restrict our attention to this class that's called uh, polymatrix games. So every pair of players plays a, a, a two-player game, and the, the utility is just the sum of the utilities. And there is another important subclass of games that's called uh, graphical games. So every player only interacts with uh, their neighbor on the, on the graph. And if the underlying graph is low degree, then again, this gives you a a uh, polynomial size representation. And we can prove that uh, even if it's polymatrix and satisfies a graphical constraint for a uh, degree 3 in bipartite graph, this is still a uh, PPD complete for a uh, constant epsilon. And then, so, so instead of constraints, we have the biomatrix game. But let me just say that every now on every player, we have a constraint on every player. We have a constraint that this player is playing epsilon optimally, epsilon close to optimal. And so um, the, the analog for PCP is we, we define this epsilon delta weak Nash, which says that instead of every player playing epsilon optimally, I will only require that one minus delta, almost all the players play epsilon optimally, and the remaining delta fraction do whatever. And sort of to get really uh, analogous to the PCP, so the, the constraint, verifying the constraint that a player playing is epsilon optimally only requires a constant number of bits because we're working with constant precision. And the, uh, so this is the. Uh, PCP conjecture for uh, PPD. 
uh, we conjecture that even finding an epsilon delta weak Nash, so this is a more relaxed than the epsilon Nash, is still PPD hard for this uh, class of games. And uh, um, I, I want to try to convince you this is sort of uh, um, beyond you know, PCPs and so on. This is a, a natural relaxation of uh, Nash equilibrium. If you only have, if you only need to change the utility, uh, of the utility of a tiny fraction of the players to get an equilibrium, this is, uh, you know, approximate equilibrium and approximately equilibrium in some sense. Okay, so I told you what the this uh, um, uh, PCP theorem for PPD is. Let me tell you why why it's good. Um, so. In the same paper, we, we proved that if you assume the uh, ETH for pipette and this uh, 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 PCP conjecture, then you, you get our, uh, this theorem that epsilon Nash requires uh, quasi polynomial time. And of course, you know, the, the actual, th so this is like a later paper, of course, but uh, uh, it's, it's a stronger theorem. And uh, so we don't need this uh, PCP assumption. But uh, th this, this proof is really uh, concise, and uh, I can actually show you on one slide. And if you want to hear more about this one, ask me offline. And okay, beyond that, there, it gives other uh, um, harness of approximation for other problems in PPD. For example, this uh, approximate CEI. Okay, so, so let me show you the proof on one side, just a reminder. So the uh, PCP conjecture is I have this uh, uh, poly matrix game. So every, I have those uh, two player games between uh, pairs of players, and they're all in a bipartite graph. And epsilon delta means that um, one minus delta fraction of, it's hard to find an, a, a, a strategy profile where one minus delta fraction of the players play epsilon optimally. Okay, so let me prove to you that if you assume this is hard, reduction from this to a, um, a two-player game. So we're going to let uh, Alice control uh, the uh, players on the left side. And Alice's strategy looks like, uh, or of, of this form, she picks a, a k-tuple of uh, uh, vertices, a random k-tuple of vertices, and she or picks the uh, uh, strategies for those uh, vertices. And similarly, Bob picks a random k tuple of yj's and, and strategies for those uh, yj's. And the, the utility is just, uh, um, e so once Alice picked the, the random k tuple and Bob picked the random k tuple, you look at the edges, the, uh, the intersections, so from the Alice k tuple to Bob k tuple. And so th these, are, th these define uh, a few uh, two player games, and they just each get the utility that the. Uh, uh, various players had earlier. Okay, so now one thing, one thing to note. So uh, if delta, if if uh, if in the original game, uh, yeah, if, if the if the original if the original game is if the original assignment is not an Epsilon delta uh, um, weak Nash, then uh, delta fraction of Alice's players can. Imp sorry, m more than del delta fraction of, of Alice's players can improve their uh, utility by more than epsilon. So Alice, in total, can improve her utility by more than delta times epsilon, and so this validates uh, delta epsilon. When you say random, it has to be uniform clear. Uh, yeah. So so there there is some gadget that forces the uniformly random. And uh, um, a crucial part of this uh, reduction is this uh, by Berthe paradox. If Alice picks, uh, if k, k is root n, so Alice picks root n vertices and Bob picks root n vertices. Remember the original graph was a constant degree, it was degree 3. If they each pick root n vertices, the, we have a constant number of, uh, we expect to have a constant number of edges in the intersection. So, and <coughs> then, then we get a constant uh, factor of, 
from uh, in this theta. So, but if they're each picking like uh, they picking all the all the possible strategies you can pick for a root n tuple of uh, um, vertices, and you have approximately like two to the root n different uh, strategies. So the reduction size is two, like two to the root n. So this is called the um, Barrett repetition, and uh, the uh, the size of reduction is like I said is approximately two to the root n, because you have all the root n tuples. By the exponential time hypothesis, we think that solving the original problem requires uh, time approximately 2 to the n. And if you do the math, then the, uh, 2 to the n is like uh, capital N to the log capital N. And this sort of basic uh, thing goes into all the... Um, all the quasi polynomial uh, reductions. Okay, so uh, one more bullet. The, uh, can we prove it? Bullet? Almost. So I, uh, I, I don't know how to prove this uh, uh, PC for PCP for P pad. So, uh, uh, Did you mean on the previous slide? Uh, yeah. Awesome. So it means only log in the exponent, or uh, so you, you get uh, you get like um, log to the uh, essentially omega del the tilde omega of log n. You get like log over log log or something, or log over. It's almost uh, the power of one is almost correct. Understand yeah, so, so if, if this was if this was actually 2 to the root n? No, I, I understand the implication, but just, yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to understand what's that, what is this real day repetition. Oh, so it, it's, roughly it's just the idea that because we need to uh, get this birthday paradox going, then we, we need the reduction size to be uh, 2 to the root n. And then we, we get the quasi-polynomial lower bound running time, which is exactly what we expect, because we have a quasi-polynomial time algorithm. So it gives us the the right uh, 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 bound of the running time, and the, the what ex what exactly the, and the, the name birth repetition comes from this birth because we're using this birth paradox to get this. Uh. Okay, but I guess will you explain the birth repetition, or we just should assume it? So so th this this is a, this sort of birth repetition is sort of this. Uh, uh, um, th there's a, there's a formal definition with a two prover one verifier game. Forget about it. this. Is like a, a, a sort of an application of the birth repetition. Th this entire reduction. So th this right where each Alice and each they each pick a root and tuple, and and they have assignments for each root and tuple. And then the, this is the right size of the reduction. Th this this is this is what birth repetition is. Okay, I can I can for, if we know I can have all the formal definitions set up, but it's not. Please ask questions. Man. Um, okay, so so uh, you know this this is uh, um, right this without without the cross uh, stuff that's the uh, uh, PCP uh, for PPD conjecture and uh, it, it's it's slow conjecture it would be awesome to, to solve it I can prove almost that so it's uh, epsilon delta weak Nash this weaker form of Nash is is PPD complete but not for a game that satisfies those nice properties some. Uh, Arbitrary game. I'll show you the game in a second. And uh, let me just mention that uh, you know, using similar techniques, we can also uh, uh, we also recently showed uh, um, a communication complexity uh, lower bound again for this epsilon delta weak Nash. So communication complexity in the model where each player just knows their own utility and they want to converge somehow to an, an approximate Nash equilibrium. Okay, so so here here is our uh, uh, how how to show PPD harness. You start from n of a line, 
and then you reduce it to, to this point of uh, finding a bar of fixed point. So I give you a function from the uh, continuous hypercube to itself, a continuous and Lipschitz function. And by Barr's uh, fixed point theorem, there exists some x such that f of x equals x. And now we want to find it. And we'll show this is as hard as uh, finding the NFL line. And then we'll reduce it to an n-player uh, game. So let me start with the, the first reduction. Um, I, I, I should warn you in advance, it's, it's going to be a, a high level and so on. The reduction is uh, n-dimensional, blah, 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 blah. But hopefully you'll get the uh, gist, okay? So um, this is this uh, uh, construction. So uh, this is a uh, thing of it, it's an N of a line. I'm, this is a, uh, say, um, this is the line. This is the graph uh, uh, I want to embed. And I want to embed it as a continuous function. So now N will be two some from the continuous function from the unit square to itself. And what you see here, I don't know if you can, uh, if your vision is better than mine, what you see here are the arrows. The, uh, the arrows are the displacements, so f of x minus x. So here, here's a zoomed in picture. So you see from here the, f, the function f sends us to this point. And the, the way we embed this edge is like along the, along the path right here, we have the, the uh, displacement points in the direction um, of the, uh, uh, with the path. And then slightly further away, it's, um, it's pointing towards the path. And slightly further away, it's pointing against the path. And it's, we win, we interpolate smoothly, so it's a Lipschitz and continuous function. And then we can uh, sort of uh, rotate with the uh, path when we're doing this turn. And then we have this edge and... Uh, and when we, when we get to the end of the path, we just have a, a fixed point. Okay. So um, the problem with this construction is that it's, uh, it's two-dimensional, right? So it's, it's very nice. We can, we, can, we can actually draw it. So that's uh, the good thing. The bad thing about two-dimension is to make, to, make, to make it hard, for me to make it hard for you to find this uh, fixed point, I need to make the square, squares exponentially small. Because I need to have exponentially many squares, otherwise you can just try them all. So what, uh, what this is good for is, is you can use this to show that uh, finding a fixed point that's with exponentially good approximation, that's already PPED hard. Okay, and, and, and now there is an n-dimensional uh, uh, variant of, of this uh, thing. Uh, I can show you a couple of pictures, and uh, this is kind of the high level. This is what it looks like um, when, you, when, you, when you zoom in. Um, bottom line is now because we're working in n-dimensions, you can actually get, uh, you can actually show a harness for epsilon approximation. So even you can you can make because we have uh, n dimensions we can make the side length of each subcube uh, uh, constant instead of exponentially small and still have exponentially many subcubes. The still the, the reason I'm still not satisfied with this is here the um, the harness is for uh, an infin L infinity norm, so that means there is only one coordinate that's uh, going wrong. So this kind of corresponds to epsilon instead of this epsilon delta weak Nash. Right, and if we're, uh, if we're embedding this path like this, so we're only moving in one coordinate at a time. So the displacement is only, f of x minus x is only gonna have one non-zero coordinate or a couple of non-zero coordinate. We cannot expect it to have more than one non-zero coordinate. And the, the idea is to use the error correcting codes. So instead of jumping to a, a neighbor on the, on the hypercube, I'm going to jump to a point that's really far on the hypercube. This is just a two-dimensional version, of course, but you can jump to a point that's very far, and then you can do, um, you can do the embedding in L2 instead of L infinity. And what you can use this to show is that uh, uh, it's PPD hard to find an x such that f of x minus x is Small than epsilon in uh, L2 norm. This is a normalized L2 norm, so divide by root n or whatever you need.
Other than uh, repeating the proof because I didn't show you to your questions on the, on the statement. Just a stupid question. What is HPV 89? What did they? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I should have. No, this is, so this is a huge problem with tube of us. They, so they had the, uh, the whole construction, <laughs> but the, the class PP idea wasn't, defined, wasn't even defined yet. So they proved like a query complexity lower bound. Uh, and then there is some work. In, it turns out it's very amenable to PPAD, but. Okay, right, so I, I showed you how to get the statement where uh, and, uh, finding a point that's a uh, two norm epsilon close to a fixed point is as hard as NFL line. Let me show you how to get a uh, harness for N player game from it. Okay, so. Our reduction will have actually uh, two n players instead of n players. There will be n analysis and n bobs. And each uh, player is going to have a, is going to have a, st a strategy that's in a continuous 0, 1. And then you can actually discretize it and uh, go to like only two actions per player. But for simplicity, let's say action xi in the continuous 0, 1 or yj. And Alice is what Alice tries to do. The ith Alice just trying to copy the uh, is just trying to copy the ith Bob. So her utility is the uh, minus the difference between x i and y j. So she's just trying to copy the um, Bob's uh, strategy. Bob is doing almost the same, except he's trying to copy the uh, jth coordinate of f of x. And I can show that at Nash equilibrium, the if you look at if you look at the vector of uh, Alice's of x is so the, all the Alice's want to copy the uh, the Bob's y's, so they want x to be equal to y, and the Bob's want to copy the Alice's, so they want f of x to be equal to y, so we get a fixed point because x equals uh, f of x. And the reason we want the uh, two norm uh, harness is because now um, if you have an epsilon delta weakness, so, so uh, epsilon of the players are doing something, uh, uh, sorry, delta fraction of the players are doing something wacky, so may maybe they're uh, in delta fraction of the coordinates were arbitrarily far off. In every other coordinate, we're only epsilon far off, so th we can bound the um, deviation in terms of uh, two norm win fx. Right, so so every uh, epsilon delta weak Nash corresponds to an approximate uh, broad fixed point. So for every Alice, there's one bomb. Yeah, so there, 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 the, the bomb. So there, there are two in players. There are n analysis and n bobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, each Alice just tries to copy the hair matching, uh, the the matching coordinate in the matching bob. The problem is Bob is Bob's utility. Depends on it's the jth coordinate of f of x. So Bob's utility depends on all the Alice's. So this is not a poly matrix game. So Alice's utility only depends on one, but Bob's depend on, and depends on them simultaneously. You can't uh, write as additive over there. <laughs> yeah, and if you in in the uh, I don't know if this is honest, but in in PCP language, this is like an, a, a a constraint with like n queries. So like you don't, you don't, it's like a, it's not a local constraint. Okay, so uh, that's it. So, so this is the proof of the, this uh, weaker statement. Okay. So just to recap, uh, uh, so this, this is the uh, sort of main theorem, but uh, we proved the, these two uh, weaker theorems, so we proved almost the, uh, Almost the, the PCP for PPAD, and that given the PCP for PPAD, you can actually get this with this uh, bare third repetition with uh, uh, each player picks root n. Uh, so let me wrap up. So this is this is uh, the big picture. We have this uh, uh, all these problems in PPAD and quasi poly and uh, interesting stuff in the intersection. And let me mention some uh, open problems. 
So first of all, uh, same as you mentioned, there is a, a PLS and there is an interesting, interesting inter intersection with a, a, a PPD. There at least was an interesting intersection with quasi-polynomial. I don't know. I think that's uh, resolved here. Uh, with this, uh, we also have the paper. Uh, sorry, the. Uh, oh, you mean yes. Yeah, yeah. The, this uh, local max cut and uh, yeah. Different because of the smooth. Yeah, yeah, but so so the the, the, the smooth uh, local max cut could have, could have maybe been uh, yeah. But all, here everything that you have is it's all deterministic part. There's no. Uh, yeah, no but uh, so so for the Nash equilibrium, they have those results. Uh, you know, even if you perturb the the because it's epsilon harness. You know, even if you perturb the the game, it's still oh, is it even a smooth complexity of Nash. Okay. Um. Yeah, so, so of course, there's a PCP for PPAD, and, and uh, you know, if you can prove a graph isomorphism or, you know, unique games, it's prob we don't have a quasi-polynomial algorithm, we have a sub-exponential algorithm, and um, maybe you can prove a quasi-poly lower bond, that would be really nice. And they also, uh, it, so we have this, like, PCP analog for uh, PPAD, but there, it would be nice to have, like, a PCP analog in the... Uh, for parameterized complexity or fine-grained complexity where they don't have, um, they don't really have harness approximation or very few harness approximation results. And that's it, if you have more questions. Um. Thanks. So we don't know any Quasi poly lower bound for problems which are PLS complete. Uh, so, so, I mean, well, the question is, do we know any quasi polynomial algorithm? So, okay, so so if it's PLS complete, it's probably not going to have a quasi polynomial algorithm, but the, there could be problems that are in PLS and have a quasi poly algorithm, like we thought for a smooth local max cut. Yes. And potentially, if you assume like the uh, the canonical PLS problem requires exponential time, then may maybe you can use that to prove a uh, uh, quasi polynomial lower bond on this, uh, 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 for example, smooth local max cut with the oops, sorry, a different uh, uh, a different definition of definition of the smoothness if it's like multiplicative or additive. Or... Uh -huh. And I can see a bit confused by something that you so Two Nash is also PLS complete. No, right. no, no. So, so uh, a two Nash. I mean, in the Nash equilibrium. Um, so, so typically the problems that are PLS complete are uh, in the equilibrium sense are finding pure equilibrium of uh, different problems. Right. And um, well, so it, it's so it's it's for classes where it's it's for classes of games where you have a pure equilibrium, like congestion games and, uh, and so on, okay, so or local max cut and. Uh, and typically, the, the, proof, the proof that there exists a uh, pure equilibrium goes through a potential function argument. Okay, I understand. Yes. So, in one of the earlier slides, you also had uh, some examples of market equilibrium in the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, what do you mean? This is a competitive equilibrium with equilibrium? Oh, yeah, no. So, 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 so this is sort of the. That's a different. That's with the, uh, the, the ACI. Yeah. This, uh, there is. Um, uh, so you have uh, uh, an equilibrium, where, like a, 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 an economy with um, where ag agents have uh, they're they're selling and buying uh, items, and and they have uh, I think it's like uh, uh, CES utilities or something. So there's uh, an amazing paper, uh, Chen Paparis and Akakis, where they prove that finding a, finding an equilibrium in in in, in this market is. Uh, is PPAD hard if depending on the utility functions, mm -hmm. and then you can extend this and show uh, like even epsilon equilibrium is still. Uh... So it's yeah, there there is. I mean, they're they're both sort of uh, equilibrium with uh, problems, but they're different. So this is like a divisible goods. So.